Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K. And today we discuss about the development of placenta or the placental formation. So in the previous class about the fetal circulation, we have seen how important is the placenta for the development of fetus. So it is having a fetal part, a maternal part and the placenta is connected to the baby or the fetus by the umbilical cord. And the exchange of materials happens within the intervillous spaces where there is projecting chorionic villi and they are responsible for the transfer of materials from the mother to the fetus. So let's have a look how this placenta is developed. For proper understanding of placental formation, the knowledge about the decidua and the implantation process are inevitable. So let's see what is implantation. It is the process by which the embryo is embedded within the endometrium of the uterus and it occurs 6 to 10 days after the fertilization and the trophoblast layer of the blastocyst gets attached to the endometrial layer of the uterus and later the syncytial trophoblast further invades the endometrium and gets embedded within it. This is how the implantation happens. So here we have a representation of an implanted embryo where you can see the embryo is covered entirely by the endometrium here and this is an enlarged image and here we have the small image where you can see the complete uterine cavity in a cross section where you can see the myometrium as orange color then the yellow color that is the endometrium and the blue color that is the embryo. So here you can see the embryo with an outer trophoblastic layer and that layer is uh, rep responsible for the implantation process. It invades into the endometrium and gets embedded within the endometrium. And the endometrial functional layer which develops into the placenta is termed as the decidua basalis. While that covers the outer part of the embryo is the decidua capsularis and which covers the rest of the cavity is termed as decidua parietalis. So this is decidua basalis, decidua capsularis and decidua parietalis. So these are the functional layers of endometrium that is the decidua which develops by the decidual reaction during the implantation process and it divides into decidua capsularis, decidua parietalis and decidua basalis as we have seen in the previous picture. And the development of placenta is from two sources that is the fetal portion or the chorion frondosum and the maternal portion that is decidua basalis and it happens by the end of the third week. So let's see how it is formed. The chorion frondosum formation, it's very simple. Initially, small finger-like projections from the trophoblast layer of the embryo develops into the decidua. And initially, they will be formed in all directions. So here you have a representation. You can see the blue color embryo and small finger-like projections which are extending into the decidua in all the directions. And later, the villi which is related to the decidua capsularis will disappear. So here in this image you can see the decidua capsularis region, there are no chorionic villi. The chorionic villi are absent here. They disappear from this side and they extensively develop in the decidua basalis area and that is termed as the chorion frondosum. So the chorionic villi which extensively develop in the area of decidua basalis is termed as the chorion frondosum. And then the trophoblast layer of the embryo proliferates and divides itself into two layers. And that two layers are cytotrophoblast which is the deeper one and syncytiotrophoblast that is the superficial one. So here you can see a representation of the same where the outer layer trophoblastic layer divides into two and this layer is the cytotrophoblast layer 
and the outer blue color one is the syncytio trophoblast. So the trophoblastic layer itself will differentiate into two layers and that is the inner or the deep cytotrophoblastic layer and the outer or the superficial syncytio trophoblast layer. And here in the syncytio trophoblast layer small lacunae will develop and those lacunae or the spaces are separated by a portion of syncytio trophoblast called as the trabeculae. So within the syncytio trophoblast the some spaces will be formed and they will be separated by the syncytio trophoblast itself and that is termed as trabeculae and later these lacunae or the spaces will communicate with each other forming the intervillous spaces of placenta. That is how the intervillous spaces are formed. So here you can see how the lacunae or the small spaces are formed and in between the lacunae you can see the remaining syncytio trophoblast and this part is termed as the trabeculae while the spaces are called as the lacunae and later between these two lacunae like they will become intercommunicating and that is termed as the intervillous spaces. Later in the placenta we will see the intervillous spaces and they are formed by the intercommunication between the lacunae. And the next stage is the development of villi that is through the chorionic villi is through which the transmission of materials happen. So the diffusion should happen through the villi and we should know how the villi are developing. So the villi will develop in three stages that is the primary villi, secondary villi and the tertiary villi. So let's see how each of them are developing like how the stages are happening. Initially you can see the syncytio trophoblast represented by the sky blue color and you can see the cytotrophoblast here and you can see the intervillous spaces or the lacunae we have seen in the previous representation. So in the primary villi stage the cytotrophoblast will send some projections finger like projections into the syncytio trophoblast into the trabecular area. To the trabeculae they will send finger like projections only the cytotrophoblast will come forward and that that is termed as the primary villi. And in the next stage, along with the cytotrophoblast, a part of the extra embryonic mesoderm will also project into the villi. And that's when they are called as the secondary villi. And in the next stage, that is the tertiary villi stage, along with the cytotrophoblast, the extra embryonic mesoderm, there will be projections of the fetal capillaries and they will develop into the chorionic villi here. And you can see how these villi are located within the intervillous space. And later the maternal blood will be pooled inside the intervillous space and that will be carried into the fetal blood through this villi. That is how it happens. So this is how the primary, secondary and tertiary villi are developed. And later the attached part of the villi to the fetal and maternal side is termed as the anchoring villi. So the villi which is connected between the fetal side of the placenta and the maternal side of the placenta is termed as the anchoring villi which will be having three parts. One is the trungus cori, the ramus cori and the ramulus cori. So these are the three terms that you should remember which can be easily explained here. You can see the villi projection. So this is the anchoring villi which is connected from the fetal side to the maternal side and the main trunk is termed as the trungus cori. From the main trunk there are smaller branches which are developing and that is termed as ramus cori. And the smaller, much smaller branches developing from the ramus cori is termed as the ramuli cori. So these are 
the parts of the anchoring villi. It is trungus cori, ramus cori, and ramulus cori. So you can see it here. This is how the anchoring villi is projected from the fetal side to the maternal side. There is trungus cori, ramus cori, and the ramuli cori. And the ramuli cori will be freely hanging in the, in the intervillous space. And this is where the exchange of materials happens. And the lobulation of placenta. After this stage, the anchoring villi formation, there will be a number of septae which is forming inwards between these anchoring villi. And these septae will divide the placenta into 15 to 20 lobes. And these 15 to 20 lobes, each one of them is termed as cotyledons. So there will be around 15 to 20 cotyledons separated by a number of septae. And in each of these cotyledons, around 3 to 4 anchoring villi will be present. So here we have a representation. This is a cotyledon and similarly there will be around 50 to 20, 15 to 20 cotyledons in a single placenta and in each of these cotyledons just like this villi here there will be around 3 to 4 anchoring villi and you can see the septae which are coming inwards and they separate between these cotyledons and finally a full term placenta will acquire a circular disc shape and with a diameter of around 15 to 20 centimeters with weighing around 500 gram and which will be having two surfaces the fetal surface and the maternal surface so let's see how uh, placenta functions. The functions of the placenta includes respiratory function where the exchange of gases happens as the fetus the lungs is not functioning so the respiratory function is carried in the placenta. Then the nutritional exchange excretory function where the metabolic wastes are exchanged then the transmission of antibodies between the mother and the fetus and the production of certain hormones and the placenta is having some storage function where it stores glycogen, calcium and iron and as soon as the baby is born then the storage function will be carried over to the liver of the baby. So these are the points you should remember about the placental formation. Thank you.